Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Dave. And so glad you could join us on this week's podcast, St. Matthew's UMC, and also those of you uh, joining us online. I'm uh, going to use my normal catchphrase uh, because I'm so excited about our topic today. <laughs> uh, it's one I really care about. Uh, I, you know, in talking to you before we kind of finalized what we were going to discuss here, I think um, these are topics that I care a lot about because I think they're they're one of the things that I, I think are really important to how we live out our Christian faith, right? And um, and they're hard questions. Mm -hmm. you, you, mm -hmm. You've got some doozies for us uh, this week, Dave. Uh, but without further ado, Dave gets to start. <laughs> So in the in the message from this week, we we were talking about uh, a passage from Ephesians, where Paul is, uh, or, or the writer of Ephesians, is really trying to to teach churches or to uh, the people who are in those churches how to live kind of a moral life. Mm. Um, so he has all of these these different ways to to live that that moral life, and I th uh, uh, and of course sin comes into that and. And uh, uh, our response to sin, you know, is a big part of that. And so, uh, in Ephesians, they're they're talking about that in kind of general ways. Right. Uh, the passage though ends with a quote that we think comes from a baptismal liturgy of the time. Uh, it's always interesting when there's a quote in scripture uh, and it doesn't refer to other scripture. You're you're kind of left. Well, where <laughs> is this coming from? What is it about? But it, yeah, I I. I, I I, th I think that this coming from a baptismal liturgy really makes sense, and it really fits in with with the rest of the the passage and talking about how do we live mm. uh, in the community of God? How do we live in the church? And baptism, of course, is that entry into the the community of God. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of that kind of fits together well. So in the in the um, message, I pulled up the um, the parts from our baptismal liturgy today that kind of seem to fit. Uh, and the, the thing that, that has always struck me about our liturgy and the, the thing that I talk with folks probably the most about when I'm doing, you know, uh, counseling or talking to folks about being baptized, uh, there's some questions that, that we have to answer. And one of them is, you know, do you ren renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness uh, and then repent of your own sin? Uh, and it goes into much more detail than than just uh, spiritual forces of wickedness, but it's talking about evil and it's talking about uh, systemic sin uh, that's both you know out there that exists within our society, and then it's also talking about our own sin. Mm. And so that's uh, kind of where um, you, you know in the message I talked about when we are baptized, we're saying we're not going to ignore that either. We're not going to ignore uh, the systemic sin that's out there, and we're not going to ignore the sin that's within us either. And so that's, um, uh, well, it's a heavy, it's a heavy thing to take on. Mm -hmm. And um, I want it when I'm talking with folks about baptism, I'm kind of intending for them to see it as heavy and not just kind of glibly um, say, "Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll do that." but to really realize um, that this is a heavy thing that we're doing, and it's a responsibility that the Christian community that we are joining, it's a responsibility that we have and that we share. Right. And that that, but, and that being in our baptismal covenant really uh, means that we're joining into that work. Right. Yeah. Um, so. I, well, and, I, and, and this is the topic I'm excited to discuss, because I think, you know, that's the... The crux of that, which is so difficult to navigate, is you know, personal accountability, responsibility, and mm -hmm. social and systemic mm -hmm. accountability and responsibility, mm -hmm. right? And you know, in a in a very charged culture around opinions or perspectives, or mm -hmm. you know, everybody has a hot take. Right, uh, right. You know, it, it's um, you know, I've always, I at least not, I don't. I don't mean I've always, but like one of the things that I think of, right, is, you know, we, we, we call uh, the enemy the perverter of truth, right? The liar. So sometimes for me, what's helpful is when we're kind of navigating or, or, or thinking through these things, it's like, oh, like the reason people care about this stuff and they are so vocal is maybe that came from and started in a good place because mm -hmm. it came from a place of like, oh, that's unjust. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to articulate or share or to fix it 
And this is just how that's coming out of said person, even if I want to mute them on Twitter. Um, <laughs> so, but it, but it is a, as a Christian, this is one of the things, this is some of the stuff that's so important to our faith, is that you are no longer just responsible and accountable for your own person. Mm-hmm. You are accountable and responsible for your person, but you are also accountable and responsible to your neighbor, your neighbor and creation, if you will. You know, I, I yes. park in, in mm-hmm. Genesis mm-hmm. with Adam and Eve, where it's who are they responsible and accountable to and for? Well, not just each other, but everything. And so now what I didn't say was you get to control everybody and be a jerk. That's not what I said. Um, but again, like, like I'm saying and kind of laying out here is, I think that's difficulty is it, it, we can get confused and, and it can get twisted into things that it's not supposed to be when we're trying to fix this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but know that like, as a believer, when you commit to that and God is at work in you, you are aware of things that are broken and there is a part of you that wants them fixed. Mm-hmm. And... Um, now I'm also not saying that like, I can always go like, oh, I know that they should be fixed. A lot of times I'm totally wrong. Uh, and (laughs) I should keep my mouth shut. Um, but there is that you're holding both and I'm, I'm soapbox. Uh, I'm very much over the Christianity that I hear a lot, which is just personal responsibility and accountability. And as long as I do me, then I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. Or conversely, the other one that I'm really tired of hearing about is people who are just so militant and anti other people, and they have no mirror. Like it's just everything else. Everybody else that's is terrible right. and bad, and that's I'm right. perfect. And I'm like, that's also crap. Like that doesn't work that way. Um, but you had a great example of this. That uh, I told you I was going to say that mm-hmm. uh, Dave. Dave has a, a great example of this that is really tough. So what is it, Dave? <laughs> The, you know, I've, uh, in, in my studies, uh, one of the things that I, uh, enjoyed learning about was how scripture and how, uh, uh, faith has been misused, uh, throughout history. And so mm. there's several different, uh, big kind of events that have, have happened over time that the church has taken part in, Yeah, you know, where that, where that faith has been twisted to justify uh, any number of things, and kind of the big thing is is World War II and and Nazi Germany, uh, because the church really participated uh, in in Hitler's rise to power, and then in his taking power, and then in his uh, uh, exercising that power. Uh, and my question has always been, it it's 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 just history that the church enabled that, but what is the church's responsibility to fight against that? What should they have done differently? Um, because that, uh, to me, kind of gets to the the very point that that we're talking about, and that's there in Ephesians. There is this this uh, this evil, the spiritual forces of wickedness that are that are out there, as it mm-hmm. says in our in our baptismal covenant. And then there's our personal uh, uh, participation in that, and our personal sin, and and you know, and not fighting against that. Uh, and so that has has always. Uh, been a question on my mind is, well, how should the church have acted then? And then what does that mean for us today? How did, how, you know, if we can look to that extreme event mm-hmm. then, um, and having, you know, history, having judged that event, um, and seeing where the church and where people of faith kind of got it wrong. Uh, and there were certainly lots of people of faith who didn't get it wrong, but, right. but obviously there were, there was a, a, a huge number who did. Um, and then how does that play out in the church today? Yeah. Um, is, 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 is something that I'm fascinated with and very interested in, in talking about and, and dealing with. Uh, but I think it's important um, uh, for us to, to, to not see this as a kind of a partisan uh, uh, you know, discussion. It's not just my party's right and the other party's wrong or mm-hmm. you know, my views are right and the other views are wrong. It's, it's much more nuanced than that. And, Mm -hmm. and I don't think, um, I don't think that the, 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 the guidance is just crystal clear, uh, across the the spectrum. Yeah. You know, if we're measuring against the gospel, uh, I think we can find some clarity, but, but, but that can be twisted. 
And I mm-hmm. see that it does get twisted uh, fairly often uh, in our debates and, you know, our attempts to, to have bumper stickers and zingers and, and, you know, those kind of <laughs> things where we're trying to, to, yeah. you know, to hurt one another in the conversation, to demonize one another in the conversation, to, uh, you know, those things, uh, that impulse that's within us to do that mm-hmm. um, takes us away from the truth instead of leads yeah. us toward the truth. Yeah. I would, um, first distinction I would make too, and, and Davey did wonderful here, it's, it's, you can never look back at a historical time period and use a paintbrush and like say everybody's like this or everybody's not like this, which you did a great job of. It, it's, you know, so you talk about the Church of Germany, right? Like I think there's some distinctions we can make. I think there is, you know, there's the practicing people. There's even people, part of those panels and part of that institution and that system that are probably not like super excited about the direction they're going, right? Because mm-hmm. I wasn't there. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think what's one of the things that's so hard about the Church of Germany and and Nazis, right, is that we still end up there. Mm-hmm. And this is what's so hard is like, I can have the best intentions in the world. I can be doing the best I can. I can be trying to help do all this other stuff. But if I help give rise to Nazis, then <laughs> I'm not going to. But but there's a point, right, where it's like, well, the fruit is rotten. Mm-hmm. And and there there is like inventory to be done of like, oh, I'm if my understandings of things and the way that I'm behaving and the way I'm contributing to things is producing this then I think discerning believers need to come to this understanding of this realization. It's like, oh, like this was not correct. And I think what's what's hard is if you don't have a muscle or an understanding of part of the way you you work out your faith and the relationship you have with God is that it is a it is a fluid relationship where you are consistently at work and in repentance, but also in joy and in celebration. Like so mm-hmm. it's not a one and done thing. And so if you, we function in places where um, I think at least, well, I'm right and I have arrived and everybody else is wrong. And then we get into, you know, conformity and assimilation and stuff. Then I think we, we start to run into some, mm-hmm. some serious problems. And then another point I wanted to make was culturally currently, Right we are connected to so many different people and so many different traumatic things and tragic things Mm -hmm. um, without any type of precursor, relational context, personal context, um, or given tools to like how to even like make positive change there. And we're just overloaded with all this other stuff that I think it can be very difficult to see any improvement and to not become jaded or bitter and resentful and just feel completely powerless or hopeless. So then our, our way of trying to combat these things becomes very, uh, you know, it's vitriol and it's, and it's militant and it's yeah. gross. Yeah. Um, because it, it, we are connected to each other mm-hmm. in ways that are current to our historic time period. And I don't ever like saying things are different than they've ever been. But with the introduction of the internet and and not just social media, but like our connectedness that way and our access to information, how broken things are and how bad some things are and and, and not being able to vet that stuff properly, if you will, because I don't know if it's true or not, right? Um, it's 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 uh, difficult to not feel powerlessness and hopelessness and how do I actually make a difference and what can I do and how do you make a difference without being anti this or that? And, um, you know, we're finite beings, so you can only care about and invest in so many things at a time Mm -hmm. as opposed to being able to invest in everything that comes your way. Um, and so I I love the example you're using because I think it provokes very strong emotions where we're like, we all hate Nazis. Uh, Nazis are bad, like bad Nazis, but at the same time, you know, if we're going to use that as a backdrop to current modern day, what are the things that I'm actively contributing to or not contributing to, right? Where, where I'm passive in, I, I like the word passive. So mm-hmm. if I'm apathetic, I don't think apathy has any place in the gospel. Mm-hmm. I don't get to sit and go, it is, you know, it, it's fine. 
Uh, it is what it is. Like the world is going to do whatever the world's going to do. Um, and I think to some degree, right? Sure. Like I can't fix all the, I'm not going to be a part of all the problems and it's Jesus who fixes things. But what are the things that I am supposed to combat? What are the things I do need to take an open stance against? Um, and not confuse it with, you know, I'm standing for Jesus and nobody else. <laughs> um, but Nazi Germany, like the, the, there's, there's also accounts of people. I love Bonhoeffer. Um, that are making stances that had very serious personal cost because it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm not trying to compare it modern day America, you know, to the church of Germany and the rise of Nazism. Um, but I don't think it's unfair to say if we look around our purview, that there are some systems and things in place that the gospel is meant to help fix that. We are not, we're not, we're not applying. Not at all. <laughs> we're not listening. Um, you know, the, the heart of the gospel is that Jesus came to bring us into community with God and with our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if we are, if we lose track of that, then we confuse, you know, treating other people as, as, uh, how do I say this? Less. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we're treating people in, in ways that are not loving, any people, um, if we're not using that yardstick, then we're falling short of the gospel. Mm. Um, be that a whole ethnic group, um, be that the, the individual who lives next door. Mm -hmm. um, that has got to be the, the heart of our discussion, our heart of our um, you know, living in this world. Uh, and I think that's really the key um, to, to, to kind of beginning to recognize, which is what you're, you're saying, is that it's hard to recognize, given all of the complexities of the world, where we're falling short and where we as individuals can, can fit in and can deal with, with um, um, the sin that is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for me, you know, I go back to where where Jesus is, the heart of the gospel. It's got to be our relationship with God. It's got to be our relationship with our neighbor, and and asking, are we, are our actions, are our systems, showing love, uh, empathy, sympathy um, to our neighbor? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and if they are, then then we're probably on the right track, and if they're not, then then we've got work to do. Yeah, and I think as far as, um, you know, I think part of the difficulty some people, including myself, might think is like, well, if I'm just concerned with loving my neighbor, then what about global issues? And what about national issues? And what about political issues? And all these other things and how they outplay. And, and to, to that, I would say this is, um, I think as we get to know people, right, and we and we carve these spaces out where we, we have relationships, right, Um you know, we, we realize and we learn that like not everybody's like us. Mm -hmm. Not everybody cares about the same things I do. And as I as I get to know people and care about them too, and I have things that I care about, right? Hobbies I like and, and things mm -hmm. that I'm drawn to. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of that picture that we're trying to figure out how to make, how to do good gets colored in for us. You know, as I, uh, for example, my wife, right? She's a, she's a board certified behavioral analyst, right? Which means she works with autistic children and their families and she's brilliant at it. It's her ministry. It's her calling. Um, and I, you know, I was involved in, in those types of ministries before and, in, in volunteer work before I even met her. Right. But my understanding of, of the issues that those people face and the, and the things we advocate for now, and, and I'm going to say it like the way I vote, and the way that I like try to love my neighbor has been heavily influenced mm -hmm. by the experiences that she has lived into that she has then shared with me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, because I'm not going to sit here and pretend like we can care about all things because that, that, that's going to kill us. <laughs> like you, right. you can't, but at the same time, um, you know, as you get to know people and as you care about them and you develop relationships, I think a lot of times if we allow it to, the things that those people care about or the things that are afflicting them or they they that they're walking through will also help us to to navigate some other things that mm -hmm. we also need to care about or help make mm -hmm. a difference in. Mm -hmm. Um because one of the things that I see with 
with people my age and, you know, having, you know, before I was here, I did a lot of youth ministry for, I mean, over a decade, right? And I would hear all this stuff of like, we would be, they would be so concerned, and me too, we'd be so concerned with issues that weren't directly affecting us or people around us. And then we wouldn't see any movement or fruit there and be like, oh, I'm defeated. Like, and I'm hopeless and I'm upset as opposed to the people around me. What do they need? How are they doing? What, what can I do there? And then what do I need? And then as you develop those things, um, I think what you'll see is um, you'll feel like you're actually contributing and helping. Mm-hmm. You know, back to Jesus in the Gospels, you know, Jesus didn't, you know, send out a tweet and then heal somebody from, and I'm not saying don't use the internet for gospel purposes. That's kind of what I do. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to say like, I don't have a, I should have a job. But what I'm getting at is, you know, Jesus healed people that were in front of him. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus developed relationships with people who were, who were directly around him. And he, and he talked to the things of the people of his day and, and the things that he had personally experienced and those around him had experienced. And so, um, you know, don't get caught up in, this hopelessness, which is like, well, it just seems so bad and I don't know how to fix it. I go, that's fair. Mm -hmm. But also if you look inward and you look, you know, your purview, you you, you know, the joke is like when I make ads for our stuff, I do a certain mile radius, right? Like start there. Yeah. Start with the people around you. Start with people, you know, that you care about. I mean, like I've got friends that we're doing stuff with that like do neighboring really Mm -hmm. well. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I live in an apartment complex. Don't ask me if I know my neighbors. Uh, because how dare you? Uh, because I'm a pastor and I'm going to go help people as long as they don't live near me. But see, pot of kettle black. But but it's but in that right, like but at the same time, just because I'm also maybe not directly connected to somebody doesn't mean that somebody else that I might be connected to later, mm-hmm. I might not want to. I mm-hmm. I might still care about that. Issues of justice. I'll end. I want to kick it back to you after this. Issues of injustice will bother you whether you're connected to people in those groups or not. Um, it's not hard to read about the church in Germany and the the rise of the Nazis and go, that's bad. <laughs> well, and, and in a way, that's that what one of the things that makes it a a a good subject to or example to talk about is that nobody, you know, nobody's going to argue that fact. <laughs> Um, nobody's going to claim that Nazism was good and, and the results of that was good. And so you have a, in a way you have something that we rarely have. You have something that's black and white there, uh, and saying, okay, it's bad. We, we understand that it's bad. We agree that it's bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, now what could have been done to, to make it not bad Mm -hmm. or to stop it or however you, you, you phrase that. And then how does that apply to us today? In, in in the world of gray that we live in. Um, and, and you talk about, you know, the the seeing things that are too big and too bad and too too hard for us to deal with, throwing up our hands and and you know cl- putting the pillow over our heads. Yeah. Um, you know, and ignoring it. Uh, I think the point of our passage today uh, that we covered is that we as Christians, uh, the passage says we are light. Mm-hmm. Um, we are light. We are the the hope. Um, we are the the uh, tasked with uh, working on those things, um, and not just throwing up our hands and, and walking away, trusting that uh, the grace that we've been shown and that we are able to to show can make a difference. Um, and so, in that letter to the Ephesians, I mean that that identity of being light was made clear. Uh, and, well, and I think Jesus did too, but made it clear as well when he sure. said, uh, you, my followers, are the light of the world. Um, and our baptism, and through our baptism, we kind of take on that mantle to be light um, and to to work in the light in all the ways that that, that needs to be done. Yeah, we, we when we submit to baptism, mm-hmm. right, we are submitting to this idea and this theology and this life now we have submitted to the concept that we need God mm-hmm. and that God wants us to wants to use us to help the world. Now and call, that God is already working in us. And that God is at work in us. And so whether you want to call that ego check, mm-hmm. we want to call it arrogant of like we think we have the solution, but like for me, um, you know, 
this is kind of where I'm going to step on some toes for a sec. It's where like, I'm so done with being <laughs> the class of, you know, uh, how do I help people be more comfortable talking about Jesus? And I'm like, but what are we doing here? Like, and I'm not trying to be rude, but as your baptism, when you have your baptism and you commit to this, what you were committing to is this idea that your life is no longer yours, my life is no longer mine, and that I want to go love people and love a world to set it right. And I will do that until my last. Mm -hmm. Um. So I don't have permission to go home and put the pillow over my face and hide the light and all this other stuff. And I'm not and, and I'm not trying to be harsh in the sense of I'm not saying you won't go through seasons where that's a thing and you're and you're learning and you're growing. But we don't get to quit. Mm -hmm. We don't get to stop. And we don't get to be like, you know what? The world is just whatever and so fine. Um Jesus, the gospel is Jesus looking at the condition of the world and going, I'm going to come die to save it. And has invited us to be a part of that now. We're not Jesus, right? Like we don't, we don't get to like, I will die to save the world, right? But but in that, um, you know, a fascinating conversation, I think, if we had a time machine, right, is you go back and you talk to the people in the Church of Germany and go, hey, how do you feel about how this went? I can't imagine that they were super stoked. No. You know, uh, insert topic we're currently dealing with. You know, we've got civil rights movement. We've got minority group people, cultural stuff that we're working through that the church currently is, I say big C church, like religious people in the States are kind of navigating. And there are absolutely some people I know that like if I gave them a microphone and was like, hey, how do you feel about this? They'll be like, it did not go well. Mm -hmm. And I was not where I wanted to be. So I would suggest, yes, God is gracious and God forgives. Um, spend the time now. Do the work now to go be the difference that God wants you to be and us to be. Um, and not to be like, there's no time. Uh, but that's what that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here mm -hmm. to do. In 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 Ephesians, you know. You know, the, the church at Ephesus was not. You know, they weren't having a grand old time. Like they, they were. They were. You know, uh, and so for the light, right? You got to go be. You got to go. The, the the light exists to go into the places where it's dark, so it's mm -hmm. not dark anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I hope that that's encouraging. And and you know, if you're a person listening to this and you're kind of like, what? Uh, <laughs> uh, didn't share this at the beginning. I am not feeling well. I totally didn't come to church <laughs> yesterday. I was I was at home trying to sleep and. I'm a baby sick too. So we're all just like miserable. Um, but it, spend that time, get in community, get connected to people, be honest and vulnerable and open mm -hmm. with your God and your relationship and go, God, what are the parts of me that are dark, mm -hmm. that need light, that don't want to help? And then as you progress through that, right? Like that doesn't ever change. You don't ever like arrive where I'm like, oh, I'm perfect and I'm great and I'm good and and I just... I've never will sin again. Uh, that's not the prerequisite to go help. You will, you will, I think at least, I think we will constantly be in this place of like, God, I have, I have failed today or I failed here. Um, but don't, don't fail for lack of effort. Mm -hmm. Don't fail. Like don't go home and put the pillow over your head and go, you know what? Like I can't, mm -hmm. um, God wants to use us. Uh, and frankly, like, no, nah, I won't say that. That's too harsh. Um, but uh, your baptism is that reminder mm -hmm. that you have committed to to the work of the kingdom, and it requires that you do go and go help and make change and stand against things that are evil. Mm -hmm. um, that's not an easy... <laughs> You know, Jesus is never like, oh, this is going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and whenever we try to make things easy, we we kind of corrupt them in the process. Uh, um, you know, I, I call it bumper sticker faith. If if it can <laughs> if it can fit on the bumper sticker, you've made it too simple. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so, I mean, l let's just address these things as hard. Let's say, let's admit it. You know, these are these are hard things that we're talking about. These are big deals. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's where we are. How, what, what's the what's the really simple, easy way of saying this, right? Like, how do you know something's a pro? How do you start fixing a problem? Well, the first thing you have to admit that is there is a problem. Yeah, it's step one of the twelve steps. <laughs> if we if we walk around, mm-hmm. well, God loves me, so everybody else can go to you know heck in a handbasket, and everything else can just whatever. As long as I do me, and I don't get involved, it's fine. That's a problem. We are accountable not just for ourselves, but for others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if if we're going to go, well, you know, like, I just got to do me. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And that goes back to your point of, like, it's not simple loving people. It is not simple, like, trying to, like, fix the evil in the world and, like, go make changes, sy- systemic changes, right? Like, that's not simple. Mm-mm. So all th- kinds of different things involved, but but I think God has called us into those places to help make those changes, and God is with us in that too. Like it's not we're not on our own. Um, but life isn't meant to be simple. So go go and mm-hmm. be go change go go love well go like fight. You know, not literally. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, um, but it, but it is those things of of we're not passive people. Mm-mm. The gospel's not apathetic, um, and frankly, like I I'm like chomping at the bit to not be apathetic. Like I want change. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll close with this. So like there was this phrase I use, and and it's in my call story. Uh, so when you're method when you go through Methodist pastor pastoral training and licensing, like one of the questions you get asked is, well, you tell us about your call story. Tell us how you know you were called to, you know, vocational ministry. And there's a phrase that I have that that has just stuck with me most of my life. And it's like, I cannot leave the world in the manner in which I find it. Mm-hmm. It has to get fixed. It has to change. And I believe there's this thing that I see where God's like, I need it to be, I want it to be different. And so for me, like I'm very motivated by, by that phrase. And and it's and it's not just to other people, like it's me too. Like there's parts of me that like need to be different. And God is at work in of all the time, right? Um, but like I like, I'm like, I don't like this. And it needs to change. And that's when we say things like, oh God send your servant. Your servant is listening, right? Like, you know, uh, but anyway, that's my final thought. What about you, Dave? Okay. Well, I, I think I just want to end this with a, a note uh, to all of those who are maybe listening to this, who, who have, who are not baptized. Mm. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe you're hearing something here that is a, a call to action that, that, uh, that you're interested in. And maybe that's the spirit working within you. Mm. Uh, to call you into this, into the church, and into a life of faith, and into um, some of the things that we're talking about. If if that's you, if you're thinking about uh, perhaps you'd like to be baptized, I, I'd invite you to to give me a shout. Let's talk about it. Um, yeah. and, you know, starting off with renouncing the spiritual forces of wickedness is uh, is probably not a, a, a you know a selling a, an easy selling point. Uh, but if you're passionate about that, let's talk about it. Uh, and yeah. let's talk about the the meaning of baptism and the power of baptism and being part of a, a group that is called to make a difference in the world. If that's you, let's let's talk. Love let's it. talk. I, I want to uh, invite you. I'll have a cup of coffee with you, and we'll 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 chat about all of that. I love it. Um, but I think that's where I uh, want to end up in that um, in in that place where we're inviting people to join. Mm. That this is a this is a worthy cause that this is you know the the battle of of you, you know in in ephesians it's it's light and dark uh, the cosmic kind of battle that's mm-hmm. going on uh, and we have a role in that um and i want to invite others to join in uh and to empower them um just as christ has empowered me amen brother i love it love it hit up dave i mean hit <laughs> me up too i would love to talk course, with you as well so- uh, <coughs> I love, I love this stuff mm-hmm. and I get so, I'm like, I feel awful. I'm going to go to my office and we're going to get stuff done. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Dave. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.